In this video, I'll show you how you can show and hide the buttons on your Captivate Play Bar using JavaScript. My new friend Scott Burnett sent me an Adobe Captivate project file through email. I don't usually open up Adobe Captivate project files that have been sent to me. However, for some reason I did. Scott shared a really interesting little tidbit of knowledge that I'm going to pass on to all of you. Here's the project file that Scott shared with me. And as you can see, there are just a whole bunch of buttons. They represent the objects that you would typically find on the Captivate Play Bar. And of course, there's an off and on button for each one. Let's take a look at this. Let's just preview what this looks like so you can get an idea of how this works. So on this slide here, of course, I can turn any of these controls off. Let's control, uh, turn off the forward button. We'll turn off the back button, the close button. We can turn them all off, actually. Why not? And of course, then I can subsequently turn them back on. Now, this was a great test for Scott because, you know, as a proof of concept, you can take the knowledge from this particular project and apply it to some real world situations. Let's take a closer look at what's happening behind each of these buttons. Let's start with the forward off button. If I select that and click on actions, you'll see that Scott's running some JavaScript. Let's take a look in the window here. You'll see that we've got simply one line of JavaScript, very simple, very straightforward. And if you look closely here, I'm no JavaScript expert, but it becomes pretty obvious what's happening here. Scott has identified the forward item, the forward object that's in the, the Adobe Captivate play bar. So this is essentially some people would call it a next button. It's called forward. And through CSS, he's setting the visibility of that object to hidden. If uh, we take a look at the forward on version of that, basically that same script, you can see he's identified forward and through CSS, he's setting the visibility to visible. So you can turn on and off any object on the Captivate toolbar. I've done videos before where I've hidden the entire play bar and then once the learner has completed an activity, show them the play bar so that they can navigate away from that slide. Uh, essentially force navigation. And this is something that your stakeholders might ask for. Now you can have a little bit more control and be precise and hide or show individual objects on the play bar. So in my example that I'm working on right here, and I'll share you how this is going to work, uh, I have a click to reveal interaction. What I'd like to do is hide the next button until the learner has clicked all four of these items. The idea is that I've got multi-state objects on this slide, such as this title here, that will change to reflect the different states depending on which button is selected. Also, there's an image here that also includes some text that when, again, you click each of those buttons, you'll see updated information. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need some tracking variables. If you go into the project drop-down menu and select variables, you will open the variables window and we're going to add some variables that we're going to use to keep track of different things on this particular slide. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a tracking variable that keeps track of whether the interaction on the slide has been completed or not. Underscore slide 01 completed. I'm going to set the initial value to be zero because when we start this uh, project, uh, this slide won't be completed. So we'll set that initial value and hit save. I'm also going to create some tracking variables for all four of the buttons on this slide. So I'm going to call those underscore slide 01 underscore button 01. To make it easy, I'll copy this and we'll hit save. I don't need an initial value in this case because I won't be checking it until they've all been assigned a value. So I'll hit save, we'll add new, I'll paste that back in and just change it to button two, button three, and button four. We'll hit save. I can go ahead and close the variables window now. 
and we can start writing our first advanced action. So we'll go into the project drop down menu again and select advanced action. This one is going to be called check if slide one complete. Now this will need to be a conditional advanced action. So we'll select the conditional tab. The first thing we're going to do is check our variable that keeps track of whether this slide has been completed already. So we'll go in and select variable and we'll select slide 01 completed and check to see if it's equal to the literal value zero, which it is. And if it is, what we're going to do is we're going to hide that forward button on our play bar. To do that, we want to execute some JavaScript and we're gonna paste in that line of script from Scott. So we're setting the forward button, its visibility to be hidden. Click OK. We want to specify that this is in the current window and not some other browser window. Once we've done that, we're going to also set what happens if slide 01 completed is not equal to zero. So we'll go into the else portion of this if then else statement and set that to also execute JavaScript. So if they've completed this interaction, we're going to use the same script, except it's going to set the visibility to visible. And we'll click OK, like before, make sure it's with the current window, and we can save that as an action and click OK. Now we need to write the advanced actions that go with these four buttons here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus icon to create a new advanced action. And we're going to call this one slide 01 underscore button 01. Now, this particular advanced action is going to have two tabs or decisions, if you will. The first one, we'll just call this button click. So these will be the actions that occur when a user clicks that button. So the first thing we need to do is assign our tracking variable a value of one. So that's slide zero one button one with a literal value of one. We're also going to update our multi-state objects that are on this slide to reflect the different reveals that each click will provide. So in this case here, we're going to change the state of slide zero one image text to new state number one, and similarly change the state of slide 01 title to new state 01. Now what we want to check on the second tab is a completion check. So have we completed this interaction? And for that we need a conditional advanced action, and we're just going to look at the value of all of our tracking variables for the four buttons. So if the variable for button one is equal to the literal value of one, and we can copy this and paste it here and just make a small change. So button one, button two, button three, and button four. So in other words, have we selected all the buttons? If we have, we're going to assign, remember our slide one completed variable with the literal value of one. So if a learner returns to the slide, we don't want to force them to press all four buttons to be able to use the forward button. We would like the forward button to be available right away. So this will check that value and see that they've been here and completed this interaction before. And of course, the forward button will be available right away. Also, we need to take care of it in this instance as well. So we're going to, again, copy Scott's script for making the forward button visible. And we're going to execute JavaScript. In the script window, we'll paste in his script there, click OK, and make sure that's set for the current window. And we're going to save this as an action.
but we need three more scripts almost identical to this. So rather than writing it all from scratch, I'm going to click the duplicate action icon in the upper right hand corner here and make an exact copy of this script. Now the completion check tab, nothing changes here. This is going to remain as you see it here. We just need to make a small change to the first tab and of course set it up to be titled appropriately here. So instead of slide 01, button 01, we're going to make this button 02. We're going to change this uh, variable to point to button number two, and we're going to change the states to state number two. So I can update this action, click OK, and we'll duplicate this once more. So we'll make a version of this advanced action for button number three. Like before, make sure that we're pointing to the variable for button number three and changing the states of our objects to the third state in that particular multi-state object. We'll click on Update Action, click OK, and duplicate it once more so that we have, again, the same or similar advanced action for button number four. We'll make sure we're pointing at the right variable for that. And we'll update our multi-state objects to new state number four. Let's update that action, click OK, and click Close. So now we have everything we need. So on enter of the slide, we're going to execute advanced action, and we're going to select check if slide one complete. And that will either turn on our forward button if we've been here before, or make it not visible if we are here for the first time. Now let's uh, select our buttons here and we'll set those actions to be execute advanced action. And I'll choose slide one for now and then just change that for button two to be the button two version of that advanced action, the button three version of that advanced action, and of course the button four version of that advanced action. I've created a, just a, another blank slide so we can test coming back to this slide. So let's preview this project and see how it works. So as you can see, we've arrived on this slide. Our forward button has disappeared from view. And of course, it's waiting for us to do something here. So I'm going to start clicking these buttons. Doesn't matter what order I press them in. Uh, doesn't matter how many times I press each button, as long as each button has been pressed at least once, then of course I will then reveal the forward button and I can move forward in the course. If I decide to go back to that slide because I wish to review that information, again, I don't want to be forced to have to click all four of those buttons again. You'll see that the forward button is available right from the start. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.